Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Adi Polak and today I am with SAP Data Unleashed and we're going to discuss the implementation of Data Fabric with a new exciting product named uh, Data Sphere. And today with me I have my dear guests. How about you go and introduce yourself? Uh, Laura Sellers, Chief Product Officer for Calibra. Hi, and I'm Muffin Khan. I'm the President and Chief Product Officer for HANA Database Analytics for SAP. Fantastic. And Data Fabric was a huge topic for many, many years, and many companies wanted to really dig into it and implement it and make it, you know, bring value back to their customers and the company themselves. And I'm curious, Irfan, from your point of view, like how is the new product going to change the things uh, as we see it? Yeah, no, it's there? a good question, and, and often what we find ourselves in is repetition or maybe even cyclical change. And the notion as you described as data fabric, I mean the latest at least iteration as far as SAP is concerned is really to annotate business in front of it. So it's a business data fabric. So what's the difference? Firstly, data fabrics or even data meshes for that matter were very much driven by the technical pursuit of being able to allow access to data products mm -hmm. and giving a single domain of ownership with governance associated with it. But often what would happen is that the the actual governance and the contextual value of the data was potentially lost in translation. So with SAP's business data fabric pursuit, and as you now described it with the SAP data sphere, which is really taking advantage of this as a trend, we have the opportunity now really to be able to allow data interactions or enrichment of data interactions, preserving that business context. And this is an incredibly important requirement for most businesses because otherwise you push the onus of responsibility of integrating, doing the governance, doing the level of even cataloging as it may be, back onto the customer's shoulders. And that in itself is, a, is maybe not necessarily a redundant task, it's actually an onerous task that has to be managed amongst all the other IT pursuits of the organization. Yeah, for many years we suffered from data silos, as you mentioned, and actually the, being able to discover where the data is when working with you know, huge companies that has different uh, data domains, if you can call it that way, or you know, to the level of data products with, within some of them. Um, it was a huge, huge challenge to even understand how we can do this cross-collaboration to drive value that goes beyond just a specific uh, domain. And I'm curious, like, how can we enable people to discover the data that exists in their organizations. I would argue uh, we've never got over data silos. They still exist today. And so the really goal of Kleber and the mission we're on is to really make data a strategic asset within an organization so that they can drive better business outcomes. Uh, with the Kleber Data Intelligence Cloud, we have data catalog, data lineage, and of course we know our enterprises, one of their number one sources of data is coming from SAP. So what we are providing throughout the SAP ecosystem is not only access to all the SAP sources with all of the context that goes with them, but also access to all the other sources so that people can make more sense of data across the organization to drive more value. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I wonder how does that connect back to data ownership and kind of data domain that Irfan, you discussed before? Yeah, I mean, the data domain is um, it's a broad term and of course you could have domain of it could be ownership based upon a region, it could be based on a market unit, it could be based upon a product line. So there's a, a high level of, of taxonomy that typically is associated with ownership. But at the very rudimentary level, we'd assume that ownership is something that you do not want to lift and shift wherever the data physically is being moved to. Because that's mm -hmm. an, almost an impossible task to get on top of because it's always a moving target. And from a governance perspective, there's not just governance around the data lineage in itself, it's also around the corporate compliance requirements as well. Typically you have, I mean, even time travel requirements where you need to go back to a certain point to be able to reconstitute perhaps what the scenario or the data was associated with that scenario. So it's quite a complex area, but nevertheless, customers are dealing with this today, even if they're dealing with it in perhaps not the most mature way. And this is really where, not to be condescending to what they're doing today, but hopefully giving them a level of professionalization to be able to do it better. I love that you brought up time travel because it reminds me that data is transient. At the end of the day, like some of our system are built for data that doesn't change, kind of immutable data, but now today we're realizing that our data is transient, it's changing, it's moving, we're going back to a previous data and you know, adding one of the rows and one of the columns. And I'm like curious, how does that, you know, how you know, the new partnership that you're building together really enables people um, observability into the data, understanding where it exists, what it brings to the table, while also understanding that if it was changed at some point, like auditing who touched it, what happened, 
um, and so on. So how does this partnership work for customers? I think that's one of the really exciting parts of the partnership um, is that, you know, Calibra, as, as we were talking about data products, we have the governance built in, so you're also understanding who owns that data. But from a data lineage perspective, it really is about that impact analysis, truly understanding what's going to be happening downstream and upstream if you go and change that column width, or if you go and change this code set. Is it really a small change, or is it going to have a huge impact somewhere else within the system? And so with SAP opening up to be able to provide more context to all of their data within Datasphere, it's huge for all of our Calibra users to truly understand all that's happening from a lineage perspective and impact analysis as we work in the data system. I mean, I think you just said something that triggered a thought. I mean, the blast radius of even something which may seemingly be a very small change could be quite a profound change. Yeah. And it's like Y2K. I mean, you know, what was it so big a deal about changing a date, right, for, for the purposes of rolling forward, for reporting and everything else. So I think with SAP having such a critical role in operational back office systems, but the back office is but merely one persona of the data. You tend to find it's, it's feeding so many of the upstream processes, forecasting, simulations, all manner of different activities. And I think this is why we, we look at the ecosystem around SAP, why it became so logically and so easily for SAP to, to look at Calibra as, as really the, the, the leader, but equally so the, the value add extender for SAP as well. Yeah, I wonder, so looking at that partnership, um, I'm also understanding the data mesh world and kind of the different concepts and the challenges the data mesh bring to the table. One of the biggest challenges were around the federated, um, federated layer, sorry. Um, and it's like, how do you build it? How do you get started? Like now that you were saying we're breaking the silos or we're, we want to break the silos, we're yeah. getting there, we're almost there, very close. Um, how can that enables us to build that federated layer and kind of implement on that vision and unlock ROI for data. Yeah. yeah. I think from, firstly, from a federation mm -hmm. point of view, I mean, it's not a one size fits all model. In some instances, it may be necessary to persist the data. It's not suggesting that anybody that's consolidated data inside of a data lake is, has done the wrong thing. It's just, it's an endpoint that needs to be managed in concert with all the other data. And federation in itself solves many issues if you're able to build the federation layer with context. And this is precisely why when we talk about the business data fabric, we're putting a painstaking amount of effort in to try to preserve that context. It's effectively a virtualization layer that sits on top of all the data assets, SAP and non-SAP. And therefore, when you make the interaction, be it directly or indirectly through a federation layer, you can be assured that the governance, the ownership, and the context of the data is being preserved. And this is why we need, of course, once again, I'm filling in the gap with the blanks as well, where we have on our side, and we don't have all the answers. This is why partners like Calibra are going to go the last mile for us and for our customers, mutual customers, to make that advantage work. It's amazing. I'm curious how Calibra enables that last mile. Um, you know, Calibra is really, you mentioned data mesh. I like to say Kleber was built before data mesh really existed as a concept or the, or the business data fabric side of it. And it really is about enabling all of that. So it is a um, holistic platform that includes everything from data catalog to data lineage to data privacy to data quality. Um, and it sits together all through an active metadata graph providing that context. So not only do we sit on top of non-SAP systems, this is about a much tighter integration to the SAP systems that are out there and understanding all of that data and combining it together. So it's really really that single point of view for anyone in the organization to be able to go understand trust and find data, whether it be an SAP or non-SAP. It's really interesting. Data trust is a big one. Like, how can I trust the data that I already have? And kind of when I see the data downstream and when I see the reports at the end of the day, yeah. what does it actually mean? Should I go back and kind of tweak some things? Or is there a specific measurement for me to you know, understand the level of trust with that data? Does it come from quality or? It, it comes from all of the, you know, like so many different things. I think quality is a huge part of that. And I'll answer on the Calibra side of things, but really that platform is overall through the governance and understanding of who is using the data, what's the popularity of the data, how often is, is this being used by other people, as well as what is the quality of that data, and truly understanding that quality, as well as all of the source systems that may be feeding that report or something of the sorts. But it's really about truly understanding how that data is connected throughout the entire ecosystem, the quality of it, as well as understanding that you have ownership over it and governance over it. Without that governance, it's really hard to trust. Yeah, it's yeah. really hard to trust. I'm curious, what is SAP you know, viewpoint of that? I mean, look, most business users want to have self-service capabilities. We are 
arguably in a situation right now where we could provide more of that, but then underlining that is, is the quality of the data supporting the self-service benefits. And more often than not, you find yourself almost creating a firewall of data access, almost a, an artificial firewall that's being created because you can't guarantee the governance of the underlining data. So we're, we're, in some ways, we're almost part of the same challenging situation internally and externally that most of our customers are, are facing right now. We'd love to give more self-service, more ability to be able to curate the content, serve it up in a way that makes it easier and accessible to the, vice, you know, the wider variety of, 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 of consumers out there. But this is why we have to put, you know, as I say, good, uh, good craftsmen would always say that, you know, was it measure once, twice, thrice before you cut once? And in data terminology, that would essentially mean that you've got to ensure data privacy and data, uh, data contextualization is there at the core. Otherwise, you are, you are running the risk of basically having errors of data. And, you know, I'll wear the customer hat for a second. If I want to adopt that, right, and I want to build kind of a strategy or a plan to have short-term wins and also long-term wins, understanding that that's going to enable me unpack you know, future ROI as well. What is the best way to go about that? I'll start with it's always about the use case. Oh. There's many folks who try to boil the ocean of we need a whole data governance program or we need to like define the entire data strategy. It's really about customers starting small and growing into it that they really need to define the use cases that are more important. And often those use cases can start with something as simple as all of our executive reporting or what we're reporting to the board, truly understanding the quality of that data, the sources of that data, where what's the lineage you know, that's happening uh, throughout the process of collecting that data. So it's always about starting small with a use case and you can't boil the ocean. Yeah, I, and I would add to that and I'd agree with that point actually very, very much directly. This is not about a logistics exercise in moving data, which is unfortunately what a lot of customer data strategies that I've in, at least encountered typically would imply that you're looking at day one of a 500 day project before you can actually take any real time value out of it. So it's really about the day one value as opposed to the day one cost that most customers are unfortunately having to deal with. And on top of that, it's about ensuring that just like the use case uh, scenario here that you need to look into first is what is your at absolute time to value equation that you're looking to build here? Because once again, the level of, of value and the stakeholder alignment that you need to have, you've got to preserve that for the entirety of the project. And this is where the majority of data projects will fail is because unless you have all the stakeholders that are along with you and are able to then reassure and also provide a level of uh, supportability and cadence along the way, you won't succeed, right? So there's a means for, a, for at least from an SAP Calibra stroke ecosystem perspective is to accelerate the time to value, simplify the architecture, and not unnecessarily make this into a data logistics exercise. Um, all right, so one last thing that you want to share with our audience today, maybe? Yeah, I, I think firstly, for, I mean, I think it is hopefully an SAP data moment as we've, as we've prescribed it as being, because A, it's going to become a lot easier to interact and access SAP data, expand the value, or expand the value rather, in terms of being able to utilize best of breed vendors like Calibra, and therefore SAP is resembling much more of the customer stack rather than the SAP stack of yester era. So this is much more an open approach and much more of a collaborative approach. And I couldn't say we're, we're beyond thrilled to be a partner with SAP on this journey and our customers are also beyond thrilled. We've spent close to a year now truly researching everything that our customers are looking for to bring meaning to this partnership and really excited about what the future holds and the value we unlock for all of our customers. Fantastic. Well, Laura, you're fun. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Well, I'm excited for the future. I hope you all lit us with that excitement. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. That was SAP Data Unleashed.